Uh-oh, guess what day it is? Hello everybody, this is alias Chuck Finley, and that means you're, li- you're listening to Talking Whatever Wednesday. Be sure to follow the show on Twitter at TWWPod1, and on Facebook at, ta- at Facebook.com slash Talking Whatever Wednesday. And feel free to give it five stars on whatever platform you use to listen to podcasts, from Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes, any one of those. And if you have any comments or or suggestions, feel free to email me at TalkingWhateverWednesday at gmail.com. Today I've got something a little bit different, something I found in a Facebook article from Weird History, I think it was. The Legend of Sonny Bean. Now, Alexander Sonny Bean was said to be the head of a 45-member clan in Scotland in the 16th century that murdered and cannibalized over a thousand people in the span of 25 years. According to the Newgate Calendar, a tabloid publication from the 18th and 19th centuries, Alexander Bean was born in East Lothian during the 16th century. His his father was a ditch digger and hedge trimmer, and Bean tried to take up the family trade but quickly realized he was not fit for the work. That's fine. I mean, not every kid is. He left home with an allegedly vicious woman named Black Agnes Douglas, who apparently shared his inclinations and was accused of being a witch. Okay. After some robbing and the cannibalization of one of their victims, the couple ended up at a coastal cave in Benane Head between Girvan and Ballantrae. The cave was about 200 yards, 180 meters deep, and the entrance was blocked by water during high tide, so the couple was able to live there undiscovered for some 25 years. Spawning and Agnes produced six daughters, eight sons, 14 granddaughters, and 18 grandsons. Although various grandchildren were the product of incest between their children. That's as far as the legend goes. Lacking the inclination for, for regular labor, the Bean Clan thrived by laying careful ambushes at night to rob and murder individuals or small groups. The clan brought the bodies back to their cave where the corpses were dismembered and eaten. They pickled the leftovers in barrels. The clan discarded body parts, which would sometimes wash up on nearby beaches. This strategy was used to help conceal their crimes and lead villagers to believe that it was animals who were attacking travelers. The body parts and disappearances did not go unnoticed by local villagers, but the Bean Clan stayed in their cave by day and took their victims at night. The clan was so clandestine that the villagers were unaware of the murderers living nearby. As local people began to take notice of the disappearances more significantly, several organized searches were launched to find the culprits. One search took note of the cave, but the men refused to believe anything human could live in it. Frustrated and in a quest for justice, the townspeople hanged several innocents, but the disappearances continued. Suspicion fell on local innkeepers since they were the last known to have seen any of the missing people alive. On one fateful night, the the Bean Clan ambushed a married couple riding from a fair on one horse, but the man was skilled in combat, and thus he deftly held off the clan with a sword and pistol. The Bean Clan fatally mauled his wife when she fell to the ground in the conflict. Before they could take the husband, a large group of fair goers appeared on the trail and the beans fled. The fairgoers took the survivor to the local magistrate, whom they informed of this experience. With the Beans' existence finally revealed, it was not long before the king heard heard of the atrocities and decided to lead a search with a team of 400 men and several bloodhounds. They soon found the clan's previously overlooked cave in Benane Head, thanks to the bloodhounds. Upon entering the cave by torchlight, 
The searchers found the clan surrounded by human remains with some body parts hanging from the wall. Barrels filled with limbs and piles of stolen heirlooms and jewelry. Now, as for what happens next, there's two versions to the story. All right. The most common is that the Bean Clan was captured alive, where they gave up without a fight. They were taken in chains to the Tollbooth Jail in Edinburgh, then transferred to Leith or Glasgow, where they were promptly executed without trial, as the people saw them as subhuman and unfit for a trial. Sonny and his fellow men had their genitalia cut off and thrown into fires, their hands and feet severed, and were allowed to bleed to death, with Sonny shouting his dying words, It isn't over. It will never be over. After watching the men die, Agnes, her fellow women, and the children were tied to stakes and burned alive. These execution practices recall, in essence, if not in detail, the punishments of hanging, drawing, and quartering decreed for men convicted of treason. In contrast, women convicted of the same were burned. Now, there was another claim that the search party, search party placed gunpowder at the entrance of the cave where the Bean Clan faced their fate of suffocation. Uh, the town of Girvan, located near the macabre scene of murder and debauchery, has another legend about the Bean Clan. There, uh, there are claims that one of Bean's daughters eventually left the clan and settled in Girvan, where she planted a tree that became known as the Harry Tree. And after her family's capture and exposure, that daughter's identity was revealed by angry locals who hanged her from that tree. And that is the legend of Sonny Bean. Holy shit. I do want to note that historians in Scotland uh, will debate that, you know, the historicity or straight up legend of Sonny Bean, if it is real or if it's just completely made up, just a tale. Uh, however, and you know, some pop culture stories for us. Wes Craven used Sonny Bean as the inspiration for The Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, I see that. If you've seen that movie, the first one, the the original, I mean, definitely see it. Or or even in the in the sequel, the, not the sequel, but the uh, the remake. Um, it's also seen in such films like Ravenous, Wrong Turn, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Again, just a bunch of savages in the woods, uh, cannibals. Um, let's see. Uh, one note here. Uh, the video game Rock Red, Red Dead Redemption 2 contains a family of savage and barbaric cave dwellers. So, true or not, it's influenced pop culture. It's a pretty gruesome story, no matter how you put it. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's, uh, I just found it pretty interesting. I thought I'd share it with you guys. Thanks a lot.